بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما بعد Welcome back tonight inshallah ta'ala we continue with the 10th chapter which is Surah Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam and this chapter is has 109 ayat verses and the meaning of the chapter is of course based on the name of the Prophet Yunus alayhi salam whom we're told is Yunus ibn Metta uh, Yunus the son of Metta or Matthew as they translate it in English min qaryati Ninawa uh, from the village or city of uh, Ninawa in what is basically uh, present day Iraq وَلُقِبَ بِذِنُونِ أَوْ صَاحِبِ الْحُوتِ So he's also given these nicknames as the Noon, the, uh, the one who is affiliated with an Noon, and which is among the names that's also given for the, the large fish or that whale. And Allah knows best. سَبُبُ uh, تَسْمِيَتِهَا Why this chapter is named after him? We're told, إِنْفِرَادُ surati. بالحديث عن قوم يونس عليه السلام لما آمنوا قبل نزول العذاب بهم. We're told that Allah Taala has named this as Surah Yunus specifically because in this chapter we are told about him, rather about his people, how they accepted him and they believed, and in doing so they were spared from being punished from suffering. Subhanallah. So this is one of those success stories, subhanAllah, that we are able to see uh, with regards to a Prophet and their people. Among the names for this chapter, there's none other than Surat Yunus. So there's no other name that it's it's known by. And with regards to Maqsidu uh, Al-Aam, its main objective, we're told, Bayanu Muhimmati Rusul. First, it's about uh, demonstrating the importance, rather the criticalness of messengers. As well as the stances, the positions that the people, the people of these different messengers, these different prophets have taken with them. And lastly, and what there is of a declaration from Allah Ta'ala of their punishment and their destruction. And that's of course when they reject their prophets and messengers and they plot against them, to hurt them, to kill them, and so on. Uh, with regards to the reason for this chapter being revealed, for we're told it's a Meccan chapter, and we don't have anything that tells us uh, about why it was revealed, or even some of its verses to be revealed. There's nothing authentic with regards to that. Fadluha, with regards to its merits and virtues, hiya min dawati alif lam ra. So we're told that it is from the chapters that begin with those three letters of Alif, Lam, Ra. And with regards to them, there's a hadith. فِي الْحَدِيثِ الطَّوِيلِ أَنَا رَجُلًا أَتَى الرَّسُولَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ فَقَالَ لَهُ أَقْرِئْنِي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهُ فَقَالَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ اِقْرَأْ ثَلَاثًا مِنْ ذَوَاتِ أَلِفْ لَامْ رَا الحديث صحيح في صحيح أبي داود. So this hadith, which is a long hadith, and we have just a portion of it. We're told that a man came to Allah's Messenger والسلام, and he said to him, O Messenger of Allah, recite Qur'an to me. Tell me some Qur'an and tell me what I should also be reading of Qur'an. And Allah's Messenger والسلام, said to him, read three chapters from among those chapters that have Alif Lam Ra. So you may say, well, what's the virtue in that? Well, because the Prophet والسلام, is singling them out and he's telling the Sahabi, and it doesn't matter, we don't know the name of who he is, but he's telling the Sahabi to read. He's asking for advice on what to read. And he's telling him to read from any three of the chapters that begin with Alif Lam Ra. SubhanAllah, that's got to tell you something. And it does. It tells us that there's some special virtues and merits to be learned from the stories or from the revelation within these chapters. Munasibatuha. The relevance of the beginning of the chapter to the end of it. We're told, Munasibatu awwalu. أَوَّلِ سُورَةِ يُونُسَ عَلَيْهِ سَلَمْ بِآخِرِهَا الْحَدِيثُ عَنْ ثُبُوتِ صِفَةِ الْأَحْكَامِ الْإِحْكَامِ لِلْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ وَصِفَةِ الْحَكِيمِ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى So, subhanAllah, what we're told is that Allah Ta'ala basically helps us to understand through the beginning and the end of this chapter 
the relationship between the Qur'an being described as being perfect in everything of what Allah Ta'ala has revealed in it, as well as Allah Himself telling us about Himself that He is Al-Hakim, the one that is the most wise and the one who is perfect in His decrees. فَقَالَ فِي فَاتِحَتِهَا أَلِفْ لَامْ تِلْكَ آيَاتُ الْكِتَابِ الْحَكِيمِ so he begins this surah by saying, Alif Lam Ri, Alif Lam Ra, pardon me. These are the verses of the book that are Hakim. And in this case, Hakim for the book, that it is perfect, that everything of, of its teachings are wise, and all of the decrees within it are perfect, naturally, because they are Allah Ta'ala's speech. It is his guidance that he's providing. And he is the best of judges, the best of those who decree and the wisest of them all, subhana. So we see that relationship naturally. He is Al-Hakim wa Khayrul Hakimin, and his revelation of the Quran is Kitabun Hakim, subhana. Well, what about the relationship between Yunus and Tawbah? Okay. Khatama subhana wa ta'ala surat al tawbati bi i'rad al kufari an al wahi. We're told that Allah Ta'ala concludes Surah Al-Tawbah telling us how the disbelievers, how they continue to turn away from the revelation of, of what Allah Ta'ala has given. فَقَالَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُلْ حَسْبِيَ اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا And if they turn away, say, Allah is sufficient for me. There is no God besides Him, Subhana, besides He. وَبَيَّنَ سَبَبَ إِعْرَاضِهِمْ فِي مُفْتَتَحِ سُورَةِ يُونُسِ عليه السلام. And in the beginning of Surah Yunus, Allah tells us a reason why they are rejecting Allah Ta'ala and the revelation that He has given, why they are being these renegades. فَقَالَ سُبْحَانَ أَكَانَ لِلنَّاسِ عَجَبًا أَنْ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَى رَجُلٍ مِّنْهُمْ Allah Ta'ala is quoting them, or rather He's telling us with regards to them what it is of the disease, the spiritual disease that's in their heart. He says, is it an amazement to the people that, you know, we would send revelation to a person from among them, to a man from among them? Meaning like, are they going to be shocked that Allah Ta'ala is going to choose a person, a human being that is someone that they know, and not just someone that they know, but in the case of the Prophet Ali Sallallahu the best of them. The one they had nothing that they could ever say bad about him. And yet subhanAllah, when Allah Azzajal gives him revelation, that they use that as a factor, as a reason, all falsely of course, but to justify why they are not accepting Allah Azzajal's revelation, why they are not accepting the Prophet ﷺ for who he was. And subhanAllah, we come to see that Allah Ta'ala addresses both the relationship of the surah in the way that it begins with the way that it ends, helping us to understand how He subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-knowing, the most wise and the best of uh, the careers. And then He also helps us understand how Surah Yunus ties in with Surah Tawbah, helping us understand that with regards to whatever the disbelievers have of their reasons, that Allah Rabbul Alameen makes it clear and He clarifies very beautifully why their, 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 their doubts, their misconceptions are baseless. إن الله وزوجه نوز بست وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وأخير دعوان أن الحمد لله رب العالمين